On May 30th, 2011, I uploaded my first video to YouTube. A video of me drawing a character from one of my favorite games. And as of May 30th, 2021, I've completed my 10th year on this platform. And over the years, I've learned a couple of things that I keep in mind while I'm making or creating here on YouTube that sort of helps me. So I thought I'll make a casual draw and talk video where I'm drawing myself, quite the narcissistic thing to do, and talk about the 10 lessons that I keep in mind. So let's get into that. Hey? Oh, by the way, before we start, my course Drawing Camp is on sale for the next couple of hours. If you ever wanted to draw like me and do the kind of art I do, well, this is a structured program that might help you do just that. So check it out, links in the description. With that said, now let's really get into the video. So here are 10 lessons that I've learned from the past 10 years of YouTube that I keep in mind while I'm creating here on this platform. Number one, know why you're creating here on this platform. Is it fame? Is it money? Is it the fortune? Is it the likes, the subscribers, the views? Or do you like to make videos? Do you like to entertain other people? Do you like to educate other people? Regardless of whatever it may be, you gotta know the why. Because over time, over the years, as you're making stuff on the day in and day out basis, you're like constantly grinding, you're focused on the videos, you're making things, and you forgot the real reason as to why you started to create here on YouTube. And when that happens, you sort of fall into this void. You fall into this limbo where that feeling starts to suck on your soul and feels like crap. You don't want that. So you got to always know the why. You got to have that as your North Star and you got to focus on that thing every single time when you get lost, when you feel like crap. And uh, that's what I do. By the way, I make videos here on YouTube because I like to watch creatively well-made videos. And I try to sort of aim to do that, what I do here. So that's why I make stuff. And also I like my future grandkids to see me and say, oh, good old Grant Cash was making videos back in the day, making art stuff. Grant Cash is awesome. <laughs> why does my grandkids sound like they're from Texas? <laughs> Number two. Be authentic and be the real you. Now, it's very tempting on any social media platform to just put a curated version of yourself. Show the really nice, awesome version of yourself. And, and what that does is it creates this fake personality of who you are. And people, the audience who are watching you starts to expect that personality. And over time, when that fake personality doesn't match to your real personality, it sort of is like a clash. There are two personalities that's existing within you. It's sort of fighting with each other. It's a messy fight. You don't want that. You feel like crap again. <laughs> you gotta just show the real you. Doesn't mean that you gotta be the a-hole version of yourself. You gotta be the best version of yourself. Better version of who you possibly could be. You gotta put that out. You gotta tell the truth. You gotta be honest. You gotta show people who you actually are rather than who you think you are. Because in the words of Casey Neistat, people have good bullshit detectors, right? They can detect bullshit a mile away. And if you're putting on some fake personality stuff, they'll find that out eventually. You can't keep that up in the long run. It's exhausting. Why do you want to do that? So just put yourself out there. Be the real person. It works. Number three, don't worry about the numbers. Oh boy, I've spent years just focusing on the numbers. Oh, how many subscribers, how many views? I go to socialblade.com and just check out like how many subscribers am I getting on a daily basis? Is the other guy getting more than me? Is the other girl doing better videos than me? It's like, why is this happening? Why, 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 why? Now, the numbers game on YouTube, the views, subs, and all these things depend on a couple of factors, which are mostly out of your control. The only thing that you can control is the kind of content that you do. Things that are not in your control is the size of the market that you're playing in. For example, prank videos with good titles and thumbnails or these clickbaity videos does a lot of views compared to say an inking tutorial or a how to draw heads tutorial on YouTube. Finance channels make more money than art channels on YouTube. Can you say it's a bigger market, it's a different market and people are investing more in that compared to this? You can sit and whine about it or try to make your videos in a way that appeals to more people or you can make videos that you like and be okay with whatever numbers you're getting because that's what I'm doing. I don't want to transform the kind of videos that I make in order to get more views and what that does to me is 
I lose myself and what I like in the process of doing that. I don't want to play that weird game. That's why I don't focus on the numbers. It's very easy to get lost in the numbers. It's very easy to be happy when things are going good. It's very easy to be sad when things are not going good. So what I found is I'm not too happy when my videos do really well or too sad when my videos are not doing well. Just flow like the wind, boy. Number four, you gotta be consistent if there's one lesson that i've learned that i keep in mind over the years right of doing this thing is this you gotta be consistent and whatever that means to you you gotta show up more you gotta make content more you gotta make more videos because that helps in improving your craft and at the same time it helps for your audience to see more of you more chances of being seen which in turn results in more numbers, more audience, more people watching your stuff. And you have the right to define what that consistency means. There are creators who post on a daily basis and there are creators who post on a weekly basis or a monthly or even like Mark Rober. He, that guy posts like once in three to four months. That's crazy, right? But every single time you remember that thing because you gotta, you gotta look at it like this. The person who's watching your video is like your friend and you are their friend. Who would you like to hang out more with or who are you in invested in more meaning are you invested more in the friend you see on a daily basis who you see on a more often or are you invested uh, with a friend who you see once in six months or a year you're obviously invested more in the friend who you see on a daily basis that's why people who do videos consistently you know are showing up on your feed more consistently and you like their stuff more than say that guy who makes a video once in a month do you like tom cruise more or do you like the daily vlogger that you watch on a daily basis is for i think i like the daily vlogger unless the friend you see once in a while gives you one hell of a show that you just might want to remember them that's what tom cruise does that's what you got to keep in mind got to be more consistent and whatever that consistency means to you number five pick one thing now when i was starting a youtube channel i wanted to do everything right i wanted to be that vlogger guy i wanted to be the art channel i wanted to be that philosophy stuff i wanted to be the channel that reviews books i want to do this that blah 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 when you're trying to be many things you know what happens you become nothing that's what happens <laughs> and your audience can't expect anything from you whether you like it or not the people who are watching you or the audience who's watching you they put you in a box from cash they're expecting some artsy well-made videos from logan paul they expect some crazy stuff from mr b's they want a video where he's given away a million dollars or like a tesla or like a hamburger with ten thousand dollars in the bag with zhc same thing with art people expect something from you that's where that consistency thing comes again right you want your friend to be consistent you want your friend to be sort of on the edge but not too much on the edge and thinking like jesus what is what is that guy gonna do today right people want that thing people want some grounding and at the same time people want some of that edge that that's why it's better to always start off with one thing with a niche a lot of channels that has niche stuff that starts out with a niche thing does really well say compared to other channels they just blast off everywhere and what that focus does is it helps you grow in one direction you're constantly growing in that direction and over time that gives you more opportunities to sort of blast off into like multiple different directions and that is the beauty of that thing first you gotta focus you gotta pick that one thing you gotta stick with that one thing and over time we can sort of experiment and do more things this is sort of like a point for those youtubers or people who want to be youtubers and creators on youtube speaking of creators on youtube quality or quantity this is an age-old debate right that's going on on this platform i've had this debate for the past 10 years yeah do you make quality stuff meaning you make a video once a month or once in two months just focus as much time effort and energy into that one video and put that thing out or do you make more videos like put on out on a weekly basis again i'm stuttering that is more on a consistent basis which one was the question that i had for years and you know what i have arrived at an answer this is the answer it's it's both you gotta do both i go through cycles these days sometimes just spend like one one and a half months working on a video right i made this video called how i made a comic strip it took a lot of time i made this video called the time i tried to be spider-man 
took a lot of time like one and a half months but sometimes you just make videos that i just do it in like one single day this one for example i'm just winging it right now what i thought was i'll make this video into a perfect video where i'm scripting things out writing points like do all the stuff and shoot this beautiful stuff it's like i was found myself procrastinating doing that so i told myself Keisha, just turn on the bloody camera set up the mic and just talk that's what i'm doing right now you gotta do both you, you can try both and there are channels that does both and that there are channels like in a nutshell kirk zaga i can't pronounce the german words it's it's very hard kirk zaga kirk Sa. yeah so they make really cool animated videos and they do it say once or twice or once in two weeks or once a week approximately in that time frame and they're sticking with it again see consistency and again they have picked one thing animated explainer videos whatever it is quantity or quality just find a middle ground that works and you're allowed to sort of go on both fronts from time to time and be consistent with that thing numero seven make something different this is another lesson that i've learned from creating here on youtube which is this you can be one of those channels that just does these videos like every other channel that is out there the vlogs the videos the content or you can make something that is actually different and how do you make something that's different it's very simple you got to put yourself into the process you got to think and ask questions like how would i do this if i were to do it meaning if i with all my likes dislikes and personalities and philosophies and the way i think the way i see the world if i were to do that thing how would i do it and what that does is it sort of separates you from the crowd because a lot of people don't do that a lot of people try to put on a show a lot of people try to imitate others which is very good not bad by the way copying others now imitate others to learn yeah it's good because that's what good artists do they imitate and learn but when you try to do something different when you make something different it stands out and tells people that hey i'm different i've got something new and there's nothing like it out there because there's nobody like you out there with your unique set of personality and likes and dislikes so make something different and put yourself into that thing and what that does is it helps you to stand out number eight diversify your income streams well this is more of like a point or a tip for not just youtubers but also artists in general because it's always good to diversify your income streams youtube adsense unless you're making like millions and millions of views every month it doesn't pay a lot i've realized that early on a couple of years ago and started building products and started building courses started building other sources of income and thankfully it's going one good for me you got to diversify your income streams through you know different sources so that you don't solely rely on something that you don't control because you don't control the youtube ads you don't control the youtube ads when are those ads gonna play in your video when are they not gonna play the whole point is when you find yourself put in a situation where you can control the majority of the variables you gotta take control of the situation by trying to control the things that you can actually control which is diversifying your income stream that's one hell of a sentence i just said that <laughs> You gotta diversify the streams and that really helps and that is a tip for most artists artists guys just just don't rely on one thing ah i'm making a lot will terry a very popular illustrator he said this when he was in his prime he was making six figures really high six figures a month just illustrating magazine covers and he said if you had asked me during that time if i would be earning six figures illustrating magazine covers like five to ten years from now i would have said yes but now i say no because the market fell down the crash happened and he was finding it hard to make the same amount of income and once he started to diversify his income streams things were good so you gotta diversify the stream number nine don't take it too seriously ah boy the highs and the lows of this platform oh let me tell you it's there there are days right right back in the day on my seventh year of youtube the first seven years of my being on this platform me being on this platform i just had seven thousand subscribers right seven thousand that's it seven years seven thousand subscribers i stuck with it and god knows why and i gained seventy thousand subscribers in seven days after that <laughs> right it's like holy crap all these years of consistency all these years of showing up all these years of hanging on the thing by the rope 
finally paid off and there were times after that where there were really low lows i wasn't i was never losing subscribers or views but nobody was watching the videos even at the start of this year i, I didn't focus a lot on youtube so therefore people were dropping again don't focus on the numbers too much and what i did was didn't take it too seriously you gotta sort of let go while you're doing this thing because again with things being in your control not things not being in your control right you cannot control how many views your videos get you can only control the kind of video that you make it's sort of hard to come to terms with that but over time it does get better and you sort of get a better awareness of that idea there's highs and lows on this platform and one person who's probably at the top on youtube right now who are name any youtube i've been watching youtube for 10 years the top guys right purifies the mr b's the casey nice stats of the world they always keep changing for some time they're on the prime sometimes they're not and that's how things are you know sometimes you just are on the top sometimes you're not and for a long time you're not what actually matters probably at the end of it is that you liked what you did and the process which you went through because the other thing which is very hard to control you can control it by the work you put in obviously again but at this end of the day you can only control the work you put in but not the results you get so don't take it too seriously and i just explained that in a very serious fashion last point the most important point is this be ready to learn and let go and adapt oh boy oh boy this is very very important because at the end of the day if you want to be a creator the youtube creator who's making a living out of this you gotta actually serve other people that means doing some sort of content that you like and at the same time that also is liked by other people you gotta find that middle ground so you gotta be open to adapting to what other people like because if you don't adapt whether it's a YouTube channel or you're an artist or you're a creator, if you don't learn to adapt and you're so romantically attached to the kind of stuff that you make, you lose that thing over time, right? For example, back in the day, there were guys who went to cold regions in their sledges tied with wools on the front and they go and pick ice. They're ice pickers. I don't know what they call. They bring these big blocks of ice to the cities and to these towns and they sell ice. That's how they used to do it. And they didn't adapt when the refrigerators came in and boom, they're out of business. The guys who rode horses didn't adapt when the cars came in, they're out of business. The auto rickshaw guys in India didn't adapt when Ola came in or Uber came in and they're out of business. So you gotta adapt. Right now everybody's out of business. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> You, you gotta learn to adapt you gotta sometimes also let go right i'm slowly uh, coming to this idea over time which is this i've been here for a while right now on this platform and i don't think i'll be doing this for the rest of my life i will always be creating videos i always be making videos in some way shape or form because it's it's a craft it's a lifestyle for me will i be doing that on youtube in the kind of format that i'm doing right now probably not and i think i need to be okay with that sometimes i don't think i'll be doing this thing and sometimes right this is one of the biggest fears of many youtubers when they just hit it right they hit they worked hard they started out well and they hit that subscribers and they come to a realization holy crap should i be doing this for the rest of my life that's a scary feeling right so that's where the part where you sort of tell yourself sometimes you gotta let go or some way shape or form you gotta let go some way shape or form you gotta adapt and uh, change and that is the lesson there and those are the 10 lessons that i try to keep in mind while i'm creating here on this platform Bye bye listen levin make sure the microphone is turned on when you're recording the video 10 years and they still don't have this right